Hello, my YouTube family. It is Wednesday only, people. Wednesday only. August 13th. Is today the 13th? Yeah. 2014. So another one bites the dust. In as far as leaving this earth. And her beautiful name was Lauren Bacall. A lot of you youngins, you may know the name, you don't have a clue. I mean, she was before my time as well, but I watched some of her movies. Lauren, uh, uh, Bogey and Bacall, if you know the term, Bo Bogey and Bacall, Humphrey Bogart, Lauren Bacall, they were a couple, they were an item. And he was like 25 years her senior or something like that, I don't know. Anyway, it was a beautiful love story, just like Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn. Beautiful love story. And, uh, yeah, so Lauren has left us. And she was, what, 89 or 86 or something? She was rather up there. So, yeah, death is, death is on a roll this month. Ain't death on a roll. Death is on a serious roll. Okay, so we're doing Lips of the Day. All right. This is a lip gloss, people. No liner. And um, although there's color this time, there is color because there's color on my shirt. You would think my shirt is red. It's not red. It's kind of like a pinky. It's, it's, a, it's a hot pink, but it, on the camera it's showing is red. And so is my headband. And they're both not. They're both pretty much the same shade of pink. But there's another shirt that I'm going to be wearing tomorrow, I think, which is, it's the same shirt, different color. This one is the pink one, and the other one tomorrow is the red one. Or maybe I'll save the red one for Friday. I don't know. But it's two different shirts. So just to, just to let you know. Okay, people, so this lip gloss is a Revlon Color Burst lip gloss. And this is in the shade Glittering Garnet. This is in the shade Glittering Garnet. And as you can see, you can't miss these glitters, okay? Which is why I'm not fond. But I like the shade. But these glitters go all over your face, your head, your... Yeah, this is, this is heavy on the glitter. Can you see the glitter? You can't really miss it. Glittering Garnet. As for the lip gloss itself, love it. Smooth. It's not sticky. It's not tacky. It's very smooth. It pretty much stays on. But, you know, it fades a little bit, and then after a while, you have to put it on. But I'd say you could keep it on for maybe two and a half hours or so before you start to feel it fade away. So that's not bad. That's not bad. But as for the glitter, I don't know what possessed me to buy this because it says glittering garnet. And what was I, blind to the glitter? I usually steer clear of of glitter. Caught me on an off day, I guess. So that's that with that upon that, people. Uh, I have no stories for you. Um, you know, this, is, this goes to, really? Yes, really? Really, booby? Oh, you just going to chill out? Going to chill out? Aww. Say hi. Hi to the family. Hi. Aww. He's my world. Yes, you are. You're my world. I love him to pieces. Look at him. See, now he's. Aww. Look at him. Anyway, what was I saying? Okay, cutie. He, th this, is, this goes to show you how old, old and decrepit, old I am. He came in this morning, and of course, I'm watching CNN. Of course, now it's all about Lauren Bacall. And I said, do you know who she is? He goes, no, I don't have a clue. 
I said, um, have you heard of Humphrey Bogart? He goes, oh yeah, I know about Humphrey. I said, have you heard of the term bogey and bacall? He goes, I kind of heard about that, but what is that? I said, Humphrey Bogart, bogey, Lauren Bacall, Bacall. She is Lauren Bacall. He goes, oh, I don't know. So, yeah, he kind of made me feel like Methuselah. That's how old he made me feel. So I said, uh, and, you know, the famous line that, that she, the line that she made fa famous was, you do know how to whistle, Steve, don't you? Just put your two lips together and blow. So they kept showing that piece over and over again. And I said, do you know how old she was in that piece? And he goes, I don't know. I said she was 19. He goes, that's 19? I said, yeah, they kind of grew them older back then. I didn't know what to say, people. She looked older than she was. But she was fierce. She was one of those fierce women like Catherine Hepburn, didn't take no lip. So she was a very strong-willed woman. And, um, yeah, you know, I mean, she's before my time, people. Okay, I, I'm not that old. But um, my mom kind of... Maybe that's why I was a drama major, because my mom, she liked movies and she liked black and white. And she's the one that introduced me to black and white movies, because had it not been for her introducing me to any kind of black and white movie, I would have known nothing about what I was missing during the black and white era. OK, you talk to kids nowadays and you say, you know, you tell them, let me show you a movie. It's in black and white. Ew, it's in black and white. It's old. Well, yes, it's old because they didn't have color back then. Okay. But it's a good movie. I don't want to watch it. It's in black and white. Y'all don't know what you're missing. Okay, there's a whole genre called film noir. Now, it's not... Film noir is basically black and white, but there are certain movies nowadays that you can also put under the film noir category, even though they're not black and white movies. But... Casablanca was a film noir movie. Um, the Maltese Falcon was a film noir movie. There's a movie called Double Indemnity with Barbara Stanwyck. I'm throwing names at you, y'all don't even know. But this is these are these are actors and actresses of black and white movies of way back when that my mom, you know, grew up with. And she introduced me to film noir movies. She introduced me to black and white movies. And I got to tell you, at a young age, I was hooked. I was, I was like, these are some good ass movies. These are good. She really introduced me to black and white movies, the horror movies. And then when I couldn't go to sleep and I would crawl into the bed with my mom and dad, my father got fed up and then he got angry at my mom. Because she said, it's because of you. You keep showing her those damn horror movies. That's why she gets scared at night and then we can't sleep because she throw. So, yeah. I got introduced to black and white movies. Like when I was five, six, seven. Those were the horror movies. And then I couldn't watch horror movies anymore. She realized, okay, she's a scaredy cat, which I am. I can't do horror movies, people. To this day, never saw The Exorcist. Don't plan on doing it before I die. It's just not going to happen, okay? So, um, yeah, horror movies, I was introduced to black and white. But then, you know, she gradually showed me Shirley Temple movies. That's how I got... Well, Shirley Temple movies and my cousin's dancing recitals got me interested in tap dancing. That's how I took da dancing lessons. Because I would watch Shirley Temple, who would do tap dancing, and then I would go to my cousin's recital all of their recitals before I got into the same school. And I would say, I want to do that. And my mom would say, are you sure? And, and I'd say, yeah, I want to do that. So at the age of five, that's when I started my first shuffle, shuffle, step, step. Okay, so I'm just filling you in on little tidbits about myself. And about, you know, and all of this is because of Lauren Bacall's passing today. So it's just a little, another little story about me. In, in black and white movies and I know some of you old heads 
Y'all, y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all know Lauren Bacall. Y'all have seen some of her movies. And, but most of you young heads, Lord have mercy. There's a whole world out there, people. A whole vault of black and white movies that James Cagney movies, Humphrey Bogart movies, Jimmy Stewart movies. These are black and white. These are these are actors that were in the black and white era. Some of Marilyn Monroe movies. Some, some of you know she went from black and white into color. So, you know she did some black and white movies. There's a there's a movie called Blackboard Jungle. She was in that. Um, you y'all should look these movies up. The ones I'm just throwing at you, just look them up. Just Google them. Go to Amazon. Read what. Trust me, I would not steer you wrong. These are some really good good movies um so you know Lauren Bacall she was in that era she was in the film noir era some of her movies were really good too um To Have and Have Not is really the only one I'm familiar with I've seen other movies with her in it but I don't recall their names so much so she, she made a good a good amount of movies and she was absolutely Stunning, especially in her heyday. She was just Google Lauren Bacall and all of her pictures will come up. She was a stunner. Back in those days, they had the women of back then, the pictures that they took, they were they were glamour shots. They were all so glamorous. The Marilyn Monroe's, the Elizabeth Taylors, the Lauren Bacalls. Uh, they were just glamour queens back that back in the, the the back in the day only because the movie studios that they were under contract with took care of everything the, the but see there was also the fact that the the movie studios back then got into their personal business as well they were good in the sense that they would keep a group of people of actors and that same group of actors would do movie, 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 movie together. They wouldn't play the same characters, of course. They would, but they would do like a company, and they would do a number of movies together. So, if if you're familiar with black and white movies, and you've watched as as many as I've watched, you will notice that, like for instance, Fred Astaire movies, Fred and Ginger. They did a slew of movies together. If you watch a number of them, you will see that there are certain actors that show that pop up in every single movie that they're in. It's the same actor playing a different, playing a butler, playing a you know a whatever, but it's the same group of actors. So back in the studio days, back in the studio days, when you were under contract with that studio, you were their slave. You basically had to do everything that they told you they dressed you they made you up they took care of you they fed you they put you on diets if you needed to go on diets they would pump plump you up if they needed if they thought you were too skinny you had singing lessons dancing lessons writing lessons if if, if there was a, a a western that you were cast in you you had to learn how to ride the horse that studio, when you were under contract with the studio, they you were you were theirs. You were theirs for the amount of time that you were under contract for. But then they also got into your personal business. Like if there was a movie that you were in and you had chemistry on screen with an actor, they would part partner you up. They wouldn't tell you to sleep with the boy, but they would couple you. Because oh my God, that's what fans wanted. They wanted to. They wanted whatever they saw on screen to be off screen as well. Even though the actors themselves were like, most of the time they hated each other. I, I, I can't stand him. I can't stand her. But when you're going out and you're doing publicity for that movie that everybody's crazy about you and you two being in, you guys need to act it up. You guys need to act like you're a couple. Do what you gotta. So after a few years of that, 
the actors went on strike and they said, you know what, we'll do what you want, but our personal business is our personal business. So after a few years, they stopped that. You were still on the contract, but they stopped that. Nowadays, they don't do that. If you're in a, if you're, if you're doing a movie in a studio, you don't, you're, they, they don't hold you for a, a X amount of years. They don't do that anymore. That's why, that's why movie stars are really not. Those were movie stars. Today, they're just, you know, famous. There are a few actors and actresses that still stand out as actors and they're, they could fall under, mm, I don't know what that was people, but I was swallowing something that I really shouldn't have been swallowing. There are certain actors in, in today's time that due to their discipline of acting, they could, they could probably fall in the category of being a studio actor, like Meryl Streep, Julia Roberts, actors, actor Sandra Bullock. They could, George Clooney, they could fall under the, that particular category because they're, they're disciplined, they believe in their craft, they understand what acting is, they understand what the audience wants. They put the asses in the seats. That's basically what the studio is interested in. If I'm going to invest in you and your and your movie, you better be the type of person that puts the asses in the seats, because that ass paid to see you on screen, which means cha-ching for me. That's basically what a movie is, movie studio is all about. Now they don't they don't dis they don't they you're not their slave anymore. Now you're you know. You got the part and blah, blah, blah. You sign the contract and okay, you're doing a movie and then that's it. So you can understand why a lot of black and white pictures that you see of actors of way back when, they kind of all look the same. They got the same pose. The hair of the, of the women are pretty much the same because that was the style back then. Whether it fit your face or didn't fit your face. But they disciplined you. They, it was like a school. You went to school to learn to sing, to learn to dance, to learn to act. They don't do that anymore. Studios don't do that anymore. So it's, it's, it's an era that's, you know, gone by. I learned this all from my mom, believe it or not. And reading and doing a lot of, you know, a lot of table book, table, you know what they call those glossy, big, fat books, those movie movie books or, or modeling books, that, that coffee table books. That's the word I'm looking for coffee. I did a lot of reading. My mom had a ton. She was, she never, she wasn't interested in acting like I was, but she enjoyed going to the movies and she enjoyed getting lost. And, you know, her favorite actors were like Gregory Peck and Elvis Presley. Honey, she had a crush on Elvis. Like you just, don't, like you just don't know. So that's a little bit of info from the movie era of way back when and Lauren Bacall and all of that. So that's it, people. That's really all I have to sh I have to talk to you about. I have nothing else to say. I really have to find a ba damn, and I think I'm just gonna have to skip the lip glosses because I have to go back to my lipsticks and maybe put some gloss on top, some combos. Because um, even I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in the stuff I'm coming out with, and that's just sad. And it's a great shade, people. It's a look at this. It's a hot pink. But look at all that damn glitter. It's the glitter. In any event, people, I love you. I love my YouTube family. I know I rambled on about movies and Lauren Bacall and film noirs and way back when. And I probably some of y'all probably looking at this with the glaze look over your, your eyes. Just trying to school you. Okay, I'm trying to educate ya. All right. It is almost time to go back to school. Okay. So I'm right on I'm right on schedule. In any event, that's all I have to tell you. Okay. I love you. I love my YouTube family. Hit me up. Let me know what you think. You probably think the same thing I think. It's like it's not that I I hate it. I don't hate it at all. But um you can't really see the glitter, but it's there. Believe me, it is. 
It is so there. In any event, do I have anything to tell you? Do I have to talk to you about anything? No. I'm trying to see if I, I left anything. And the only thing I wrote on my notebook was now Lauren Bacall because she now she passed. Robin Williams, and Lauren Bacall, and they, they just yeah, death is um really going overboard. He needs to stop now. He can go. He can go now. So that's that. I love you. I love my YouTube family. We have three down, two more to go, people. Okay. Why is there two more to go? I don't know. So I love you. Let me know what you think. And, you know, discuss. If you guys have a clue as to what I was talking about, let me know. Let me let me not be the only one that's really Methuselah like old, okay? But I guess I'm very I, I I'm enthusiastic about the subject because it was my major. So why I didn't become an actress, I don't know. Well, I know because I didn't keep up with the discipline that I should have had. I you know, in my twenties, after I graduated college, honey, I was pounding the pavement. I was buying all the, the, the Broadway um newspapers and going on auditions and this this and that but after you hear no and door slamming in your face more often than not the only gig I really the only professional gig I ever got was that law that um, law and order episode and I didn't have a word to say I was a juror so I didn't have anything to say and no I wasn't like the lead juror and you know the verdict is no I was just per the camera just panned by me if you blinked you missed me the name of the episode is called The Blue Wall, in case you're interested. It was back in like the first or second season of Law & Order. Now, Law & Order is like season 110,000. I don't know. It's still on. So, back in the day, people. All right. So, I love you. I love my YouTube family. Hit me up. Let me know what you think. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.